I'm Tuffy Stone, and these are my competition style barbecue ribs for your backyard. So one of the important things when it comes to cooking my competition pork ribs is to start off with excellent pork. Most pork producers will guarantee their pork to be wholesome or safe to eat. 21 days from harvest for bone in, 28 days from harvest uh, for bone out. The only way you're gonna know that is either to be able to see the label on the box or the case in which the meat was shipped in or to have a good relationship with your butcher or your market. The pack date and the harvest date are usually one and the same. Uh, my sweet spot, I like pork that's about seven to 14 days from harvest. I usually have great success with that. When you, when you go to your meat case, you go to your butcher, some of the things that I'm looking for visually when it comes to selecting my competition pork ribs is, is I want thick ribs, I want meaty ribs, I want straight bones. Uh, you can see these are fairly straight bones. And I want, I want good marbling, I want nice intermuscular uh, fat, striations of fat. You can see through the cry cryovac on this one uh, that there's these, um, these striations of fat in there. As we cook these ribs, which are gonna take about four hours to cook, um, that, fat, that fat will render out, it'll make for a nice juicy bite, good flavor. So well marbled, straight bones, thick, ideally ribs that are seven to 14 days old. Some of, my, uh, some of my classes that I teach, sometimes uh, they'll ask, is it okay to cook frozen ribs? Uh, frozen ribs would probably be an area that I'm okay with, as long as they were fresh when they were frozen. They're frozen in, uh, in, in, in cryovac or vacuum sealed. Um, they'll be fine. So I'm going to take these out of the cryovac. I'm gonna dry them off and we're gonna remove the membrane. So I've got my uh, ribs out of the vacuum seal, out of the cryer vac, and we're just gonna wipe them off, get some of that moisture. Uh, now I'm gonna remove the membrane. For me, this process is easier to remove the membrane while the ribs are still really cold. So once they come out of the refrigerator, once they come out of my, uh, my cooler, I'm gonna uh, try and do that pretty quick. I find it's easier to remove that way. Some people like to keep their membranes on. They say that it helps keep moisture in. That's not my preference. Um, the texture that comes from the cooked membrane, if you were to leave that on, it's got like a paper-like quality. Some people will cook it, then remove. I wanna get the seasoning on both sides of these ribs. So I'm just gonna take a paper towel, start at one end, tear the membrane back. Some people you'll see will take and, and use a butter knife to kind of like pry the membrane off. But it takes a little practice. If you haven't done it before, You'll get used to it over time. I've done thousands of ribs now, so I'm very familiar with the process. Now I'm going to just take a knife and I'm going to clean these up. Uh, these were already St. Louis cut uh, ribs, so there's not a lot of knife work involved, but I'm going to take some of the flap off here. If there was a lot of fat on these bones that I didn't feel like would render out during my cooking process, I'll take a spoon and I'll just scrape that fat off. Competition rib. A lot of times I will lose uh, the end bones on both sides because I know the ribs that I'm gonna turn in for competition are gonna be right in here. But if we're just trying to cook great ribs in our backyard, great ribs for our family, our friends, uh, and we're gonna do my competition style, you can leave those ribs on there. I mean, uh, meat's expensive. Th these ribs aren't gonna be as delicious as these ribs, but when I'm in catering, restaurant, cooking for my family and friends, I'll leave them all on. When I'm in a serious competition, I'm gonna concentrate right on the honey hole. So competition cooks. Um, again, I would not do this cooking for my family, friends, catering or restaurant, but competition, I want these ribs to be a, a perfect rectangular. I want them to be straight edges, 90 degree angles. And so I will just come in and I will make the cut side of these ribs a straight line and then on the other side, I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna make a score and I'm gonna use the longest bone because it, it can't be any shorter than the longest bone. So as you can see, I took the longest bone, made that my, my, my mark and I just came in and I've made these uh, a really nice rectangle. So that's only gonna influence presentation 
and competition ribs were being judged on presentation, taste, and tenderness. So I just want, I want uh, perfectly square ribs in the box if I can. So with the meat side of these, I, I want to remove this membrane. Uh, if there was any fat like in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trim back some of that because it's not going to all render out. I, I want the fat that, that a judge might bite to be delicious fat. I want it to be rendered. I want it to be luscious, uh, but I don't want it to be globby fat. So I'm going to take my knife, trim off this uh, silver skin, this membrane here, uh, and trim a little bit of this fat off. Uh, there are no shiners on these ribs. Shiners are where uh, during the, the butcher process, meat was shaved away and you actually expose the bone itself. So when you're in the market and you're looking through the cryovac, just look for ribs that don't have any shiners. Just repeating myself, this would not be a step that I'd probably do at home when I'm cooking for friends and family, but for competition barbecue. Competition barbecue is one bite food. I got one bite to get that uh, judge's attention and make my rib be the best of him that day. So this fat is not gonna really render out during the cooking process. So if I just take and, and hold these ribs in my hand and let them bend, I can come in with my knife and just shave off a little bit of that. That'll just help it to where the fat will be a little less and actually render out to be a pleasant, juicy chew for the judges. So I've got my competition ribs all prepped. Uh, these ribs here are Chairman's Reserve. They're a rib that you'll usually find great coloring, great marbling, great flavor. Um, again, competition barbecue is one bite food. So we got one chance to, to ring that judge's bell with a uh, good flavor, juicy ribs. So these are thick, the bones are straight. I, I've trimmed them really well. Now it's time to uh, season them up and get the smoker ready. So fire management is, is really important when we're grilling and we're smoking. Um, some things are hot and fast. You know, if we're grilling a steak, we're grilling a, a pork chop, something like that, we might want to directly grill right over the fire itself. Uh, but when we're cooking ribs or brisket or pork butts or, or meats that take hours and hours and hours to cook to tender, we either want to cook them on a smoker or we want to do it what's called two zone cooking. And so two zone cooking would be where, you know, we might have coals on half of the bottom of our kettle or grill and, and we will have another half of it that has no coals at all. And what we can do is we can take a long cut meat like a pork butt or brisket or ribs and we can actually put it over here on the cool side, the side that doesn't have any coals, and we can indirect cook those, those long cut meats. Uh, what that does is it's gonna reduce the risk of burning and searing those meats too much because they're not the meat's not sitting directly over the coals. But when we go to a bullet style smoker, this is a more gentle way of cooking, or I, I also cook on offsets sometimes but I'm setting up this bullet smoker to cook ribs. The same setup would be true for pork butts or brisket or anything that's gonna take a long time to cook. I've got my charcoal ring. It's sitting on the grate. I've got, uh, in this case, just briquettes, and I've got three chunks of hickory wood. And uh, I have made a little indentation, a little divot in the middle of the charcoal. And if you'll see over here, I've used one of my kettles really is just a place to kind of get my, my charcoal chimney going. Normally I'll use just two or three sheets of newspaper, ball it up, put it underneath. Um, because all I want to do is get these lit coals to get my smoker going for the ribs, I've only put a half a load of uh, charcoal in the chimney. A gentleman, Jim Minion, uh, came up with this method or this technique called the Minion Method. And basically, by taking lit coals and adding them to unlit coals, you get a longer, cleaner burn, and it's where the heat travels from the lit coals to the unlit coals. That's how we get the longer burn, and by having plenty of oxygen to that fire, uh, we're also gonna have a, a better smoke. So now I'm gonna just put a, a, a very, very thin coat of uh, neutral oil, so grapeseed oil would be a good one, a vegetable oil, but just a, a very neutral oil. I'm gonna use this oil as like a slather. 
basically all it's going to do is is help the rub adhere to the ribs itself it's going to help facilitate how it starts to uh, sweat and dissolve so next i'm going to season these ribs i'm going to do two layers i'm going to use my classic barbecue rub and my sweet barbecue rub i'm going to go a little heavier on the classic barbecue rub and a little lighter on the sweet rub uh, if you want to make your own rub i you can i've got a link to uh, my cool smoke barbecue rub and my cool smoke barbecue sauce so if you really want to just make your own i've got recipes out there uh, you can go to tuffystone.com to see that you can go to my youtube channel but if you want to make your own rub by all means i've got recipes if you want to make it your own you can take my recipe and riff on it a little bit so if you want to you know change out the type of pepper change out the type of sugar change out the type of salt make it your own one thing that's really important when we season meats and i don't care if it's ribs or brisket we want to have uniform coverage so i'm going to be really careful to make sure that as i season all sides of these ribs that it's the same amount just some general things to think about when we season meats the bigger the cut of meat, the more rub that I put on there. The bigger the cut of meat, the longer I let that rub sit on there before I put it on the cooker. The thinner the cut, uh, less rub. The thinner the cut, less time on there. Why? Most barbecue rubs, including my sweet rub and my classic barbecue rub, have salt in them. If we let this rub sit on these ribs too long, that salt will actually cure or cook the meat and give it a ham-like quality. So I wanna get good flavor development, but I don't want to cure that meat. Um, I want the rub to be a supporting flavor to these delicious pork ribs that I have so carefully selected. When seasoning with rubs, we wanna shake it up. If we make a rub or if we have a rub and it's sat in the cupboard for a long time or in the basement in a cool, dark place, the heavier ingredients will settle down. Uh, so just whenever you're seasoning meat, just shake it up really well. Rubs can last for months and months in a cool, dark place. So I have put two coats of rub on the, on the bone side of these ribs, my classic barbecue rub, my sweet rub. I'm going to now press this rub in. I'm going to flip them over. I'm going to do the meat side next. So you can see I was very careful, took my time to get a nice uniform covering of these ribs. I want every bite to be full of flavor, not too much, not too little. So when I'm, I'm, when I'm seasoning anything, it's all about uniform coverage and just the right amount. I've got some, uh, some rub that's uh, kind of over shake or over spray. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna tap the edges of each side of my ribs and I'm gonna get rub on both sides. Uh, again, I'm just trying to get perfect. I'm trying, you know, this is competition rib. This is not backyard rib. This is not, you know, a family reunion. This is about trying to, to win first place at a competition. All that being said, they're really good in the backyard. So I'm just going to transfer these to a pan. Uh, I'm going to let them sit out ambient temperature for one hour and, and let those flavors kind of co-mingle. You'll see when we go to put these on the smoker after one hour, they've become a little wet, a little glossy. That salt, those sugars, a lot of those seasonings are starting to dissolve and get some flavor penetration into the pork ribs. All right, so we trimmed my competition ribs. We seasoned them with my rub. I've got my bullet smoker that's behind me running at 275 degrees. The, the, the rub's been sitting on here for about one hour. You can see they're starting to sweat, starting to get a little bit glassy. Uh, those ingredients are starting to dissolve and we're starting to get some of the flavor into the meat itself. So now we're gonna take these to my Weber Smoky Mountain. You can use uh, whatever grill you got, as long as it's two zones. So if you got a gas grill, burners on, burners off, put it on the cool side. Anyways, we're gonna put my ribs on the bullet smoker, which is running about 275 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you place your ribs on the cooking grate, just squish them together and make sure they're, 
the position that you want because as these things cook, they'll kind of hold that shape. We don't want them stretched out. We want them in a nice, perfect rectangle. So our ribs have been on the smoker for one hour. Now I'm just gonna take the lid off and brush each rib with a little melted butter. All right, so we cooked our ribs for one hour on the smoker. After that, we, we brushed them with butter. We've cooked them for another 30 minutes. Now it's time to spray them with apple juice. So we're gonna cook them for another 30 minutes and then we're going to prepare them for the Texas Crutch where we're gonna put some other ingredients on there and wrap them in aluminum foil, put them back on the cooker. So all my barbecue buddies know about these, but for some of you that might be new to grilling and smoking, uh, a great little tool when it comes to cooking barbecue are these cotton gloves. You can get them at uh, most hardware stores. And what you're gonna do is you'll put the cotton gloves on, then you'll put the disposable gloves on the outside. The white gloves, the cotton gloves are gonna insulate our hands from the heat. And then these disposable gloves will keep us from getting barbecue sauce or barbecue all over the gloves themselves. So just uh, what I like about them is just a little bit more uh, dexterity when it comes to grabbing things. My competition ribs have been cooking for two hours on my Weber Smoky Mountain. Now it's time to uh, do the Texas Crutch. For anybody that might not know what the Texas Crutch is, it's a really great technique of when our, our meat has the right amount of color, the right amount of smoke, but it's not done. We can take and wrap in aluminum foil, you can do it in butcher paper, but what that'll do is stop the smoking process, uh, keep the moisture in, we'll put it back on the cooker and we'll cook it to the doneness that we're looking for. All right, so I'm going into a hush tone. When I go into a hush tone, that's when you really listen up. So I've had a lot of good fortune on the competition circuit and these seven ingredients here are exactly what I do in competition barbecue. Uh, as, I, as I take these ribs off the smoker and I go to wrap them, I'm gonna apply these seven ingredients to both sides of the ribs. When they're done, the meat side will be done and I'm gonna put them back on the smoker to continue to cook. But the seven ingredients are cayenne pepper, my classic barbecue rub, dehydrated minced onion bits, light brown sugar, I've got some uh, butter here. I've got honey and I've got apple juice. Some of y'all in the know, I use Lucky Honey. Uh, that's a longer story for another day. And sometimes I'll use parquet or margarine, but uh, I, I like butter a lot. So the ribs have been on the smoker for two hours. I'm in, I'm in the shadows here with the trees, so it looks a little bit darker in reality, but what we're looking for is a nice mahogany brown color. Two hours of smoke in the smoker usually gives me the smoke and the color that I'm looking for. Going into a hush tone. This is cayenne pepper, and I don't care how good you are. When you try to sprinkle cayenne pepper with your fingertips, it'll clump. So I'm just taking a fine mesh tea bagger. Just a hint of that heat. So the cayenne pepper, the reason I use the tea bagger is I just want a nice flutter of cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper's hot. I don't want to offend anybody with the ribs being too spicy. So just a little bit of heat in the back. Next ingredient, my classic barbecue rub. Next ingredient, dehydrated minced onion bits. Next, some light brown sugar. Melted butter. Honey. And lastly, high quality apple juice. If there's any area that's gotten crisper than you want, we can really uh, hit it a little bit more with the apple juice spray. Make sure it's in a mist and not in a stream. We're gonna flip and put the meat side down. I have pressed with my fingers, pressing the meat between the bones to force that meat to release. It's strictly for presentation. I'm gonna brush them with a little melted butter. Next, cayenne pepper. 
a little of my Tuffy Stone Classic Barbecue Rub. It's dehydrated onion bits. Next, some light brown sugar, honey. And last but not least, high quality apple juice. Now we're gonna wrap the ribs in aluminum foil. Try and get the best heavy duty aluminum foil you can find. We wanna be careful to not puncture the aluminum foil with the bones or any crispy edges of the ribs. I am always gonna fold the exact same way. I fold four sizes, being careful not to puncture, um, but at some point, once I think they're close to being tender, if I wrap them the right way, I can unwrap them to check the ribs for doneness. So I've got my ribs wrapped. We're gonna return them to the smoker, cook them from about an hour and a half to two hours until there's tenderness that we're looking for. All right, so my competition style ribs are almost done. Uh, to get ready for the last step, I am going to take some of my original barbecue sauce and some honey. The ratio is about a quarter cup of honey to a cup of the sauce. It's gonna give it a nice sheen. It's gonna be a nice complement to the spicy smoked ribs. I'm just gonna heat up my sauce until it's warm through. I don't wanna reduce it at all. I'm gonna check my ribs now for doneness. If they're done, I'm gonna take them off the smoker, bring them over to my table, and, and brush both sides with sauce. There's a number of ways that you can check ribs for doneness. One, you can do the bend test, and that's when we take a pair of tongs and we lift on the ribs. And if they start to break a little bit, that's usually a sign that they're done. We can also use a toothpick or a skewer. Uh, we should be able to slide that toothpick or skewer through the middle of the bones into the meat, and it should slide in easily, giving no resistance. If you're a temperature person and you need an exact doneness, just remember it's barbecue and, and those temperatures change depending on what your cooking temperature is. But if you're cooking at 275 to 285 degrees Fahrenheit, usually those ribs are gonna be done somewhere between 202 and 207 degrees Fahrenheit. So I checked the ribs for doneness, they're done. It's time to get them out and get them sauced. So I'm very happy with the color of these ribs. Uh, as you saw before, I did the Texas crutch, but nice mahogany brown color. I'm gonna sauce both sides, starting with the bone side. We'll flip them over, do the meat side, put them back on the cooker. So I'm very pleased with the color. I don't know if you can see it or not, but to me, they look gorgeous. I've sauced both sides with my uh, mixture of my Tuffy Stone Original Barbecue Sauce with some honey. Now I'm just gonna take them back over to my smoker and I'm gonna put them back on there. Important step when cooking ribs is, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna get this sauce too hot putting it back on the smoker. A lot of barbecue sauces have sugar in them, including mine. So I just wanna barely set the sauce. So we're gonna put them back on the smoker for just about five minutes. So uh, let's talk a little bit about competition ribs. Um, one time I was cooking in Kansas City and Jamie Gear, who builds uh, these offset cookers that I love to cook on, uh, he took me over to a legendary barbecuer named Johnny Trigg, who's known as the godfather of barbecue. I'm with my next door neighbor, Kendall, who used to cook with me on my team, Cool Smoke. And uh, Jamie says up to Johnny, he says, Johnny, can Tuffy have one of your ribs? He says, sure. So anyways, me and Kendall both grab a rib. These are the ribs that didn't even get turned in. These are the culls. So we grab a rib and we say, thank you very much. And we walk away and we take a bite of that rib. And we both looked at each other at the exact same time with the same look, because we knew we had never cooked a rib that tasted that good before. So uh, anyways. Johnny cooks a mean rib. So my ribs have been on the smoker for about five minutes. Uh, basically what you're looking for is where that shiny sauce just becomes a little bit opaque, uh, but don't, don't get it tacky, don't get it sticky. Oh man, oh man, look at that. Look at this. So 
So pretty. All right, so everybody watching this video, if you follow my steps, maybe practice a little bit. There's no reason why you can't make competition style barbecue ribs in your backyard. What I like about these is the color I'm looking for. They're not too dark. They got the right amount of smoke. They got the right amount of sauce. They got the right amount of rub, but the proof is in the pudding. So it's time to slice one of these up, take a bite and see how we did. People talk about a rib that's falling off the bone being so good. That's because nobody likes tough barbecue. But as you get better at making ribs, you're gonna find it's a nice gentle chew, but where you take a bite, uh, the meat will come cleanly from the bone, but the rest of the meat should stay on that bone. 